Good evening. Once again, Kenny Jacobs from Bloomington, Illinois. Going to do another video this evening talking about current events as it relates to Bible prophecy. And <clears throat> this channel is dedicated to two things, the gospel of Jesus Christ and end time events. And you know, I I just I can't believe how <laughs> How asleep this world is, and how complacent people are, and how indifferent they are, how lukewarm they are, how unprepared the world is for what's about to happen. They have no idea how close we are to all hell breaking loose on this earth, and unless you are truly following Jesus Christ, you are lost and you're going to be stuck here during the worst time known to man on this planet. And we are right at the door of that happening. And uh, every day the events are just, ra they're just, they're just stacking up one after another and, and coming closer and closer and faster. I just, I just can't believe how close we are. And uh, <clears throat> so again, I'm going to continue to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ and point out how the daily news lines up with Bible prophecy as long as I can. Uh, but, I, but I'll tell you, time is really, really short. So, uh, with that, uh, let's, well, for, by the way, if you're new to my channel, uh, this is not a place to come for political correctness. I'm going to, I just, just, you're looking for political correctness. You've come to the, I'm just going to say that you've come to the wrong place. I'm going to stand up for the truth. I have no trouble saying Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father. I'm not going to tell you anything about the ecumenical movement or the prosperity gospel or we're all going to the same place. We all worship the same God. I'm here to proclaim Jesus Christ and His soon return. So with that. Let's get into several news stories, and i got quite a bit of scripture to go with these stories. Uh, here's, a, here's a story I found out of Yahoo Finance today. Vatican Bank may be too corrupt for Pope Francis to save. Vatican Bank may be too corrupt for Pope Francis to save. It says the Vatican Bank is one of the most mysterious institutions in the world, the completely independent financial institution is run by the Catholic Church and until 2013 had never so much as a financial had never released so much as a financial report. Pope Francis is finally attempting to shed some light on the fabled bank. Under his watch, investigators have closed more than 3,000 suspect accounts. Long-standing bank officials have been fired and the institution now serves only Catholic institutions, clergymen, and diplomats within the Vatican. The Pope even reportedly considered closing the bank after a scandal in January of 2014, uh, where uh, Monsignor Nunzio Scarano, then accountant for the Vatican's real estate holdings, was arrested for attempting to use the bank to smuggle and launder millions of euros. Um... <clears throat> In his book, God's Bankers, A History of Money and Power at the Vatican, investigative journalist Gerald Posner, who was raised Catholic, dives deep into the shrouded history of the Vatican Bank. The history includes sordid stories of financial alliances with Germany during World War II and Italian mobsters in the 1980s. Um, but here, here's where it gets interesting. He says, Pope, he said, Posner believes that Pope Francis is the real deal and that he's certainly reforming the bank and applying EU transparency rules as best he can. But Posner says the main question is whether Pope Francis will apply this transparency to the history of the bank, meaning will he go back and open up the Holocaust files about the Vatican Bank so that historians and investigators can see the extent of their involvement. Posner firmly believes that there is no way the bank could ever consider reparations to the families of the Holocaust victims. When it comes to giving out money, the answer is always no, he says, even with, even with this Pope. In the 1990s, there was a push for restitutions of by Holocaust survivors against insurers and companies who had engaged in using Jewish slave labor. 
The Vatican was the only entity that refused to open up its files or to cooperate or to give a dollar. <clears throat> um, again, as usual, I'm going to post this, the uh, link to all these articles in the description box so you can look at it yourself. But let's just go back up here to the top. Vatican Bank may be too corrupt for Pope Francis to save. Um, <laughs> First of all, let's look at some scripture. Let's go to Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21, verse uh, 12 and 13. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. And he said unto them, it is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Now, the, the dangerous thing, and, and again, that, there's, here's just another perfect example of the disconnect between the gospel of Jesus Christ and Roman Catholicism and the Vatican and the papacy. And uh, the real dangerous thing here. As Posner says here, Posner believes that Pope Francis is the real deal. Pope Francis is a wolf in sheep's clothing. He is a prime candidate to be either the Antichrist or the false prophet of Revelation. He's promoting right now the one world government and the one world religion, his ecumenical movement. And he's very, very dangerous because people think that he is the real deal. The world loves his lukewarm gospel, his all his inclusive gospel, his ecumenical movement. If he really was the real deal, he wouldn't say God can't do everything, he doesn't have a magic wand. He wouldn't say things like even atheists can go to heaven if they're good people. And he certainly wouldn't be praying with imams, with Muslim imams in mosques, if he was the real deal. He would be standing up for the gospel of Jesus Christ, which he never does. He believes that there are many paths to God. Well, you know what? He contradicts himself so much, I don't know what he really believes. Because in one phrase, one time he'll say things like, even atheists can go to heaven. And then he says uh, another day that there's only salvation through the Catholic Church. One thing I've never heard him say, nor will I ever hear him say, is that salvation comes through grace by faith alone in Jesus Christ and the finished work on the cross. That I know I'll never hear him say. He never stands up for the truth of the gospel. And that's what makes him so dangerous. He's preaching a gospel that the world loves, the world wants to hear, but he's not preaching the true gospel. Let's go to also go to Revelation chapter 18. Revelation chapter 18, verses 2 through 8. Revelation 17 is a great uh, example of the Vatican and Vatican City in, in the Bible. Revelation chapter 17 talks about mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And Revelation 17, 4 says, And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet collar and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And again, uh, the papal colors, uh, gold and, and purple and scarlet, and the golden cup that they hold up at the Mass, and the pearls and precious stones you see everywhere. And uh, Revelation 17, verse 18 says, And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. And Vatican City is both a city and the country, and it reigns over the kings of the earth. So Revelation 17 is a great depiction of Vatican City and, and, and the papacy. But let's, let's go to Revelation chapter 18, verses 2 to 8, and see what's going to happen to it. It says, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great has fallen, has fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are, are waxed through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, 
that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. By the way, I, reading that verse right there, a lot of people think that America is Mystery Babylon. But if it was, verse 4 makes zero sense. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. God would not call the United States her people. Um, and wouldn't, you know, living in America is not a sin. But God would call people who are part of an apostate church who think that they are Christians to come out of mystery Babylon. So again, Revelation 18, 4 says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins are reached, up, reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double, according to her works, in the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. How much she hath glorified herself, and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and, and am no wit widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. Now, that is, that's the, that's, that is prophesied, in, 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 and if you look at the Malachi prophecy, and if you look at what Archbishop Sheen said about the final pope in the Vatican in Rome, that lines right up with what they prophesied, what the, even Catholic doctrine, Catholic prophecies have said what happened in the last time with the last pope. And, uh, you know, she's lived deliciously, and, you know, <laughs> this, is, this is, you know, the bank, the, the Vatican Bank, the, it is the, maybe the, the wealthiest institution on the planet. And I just I have a hard time believing with all that corruption, they can still maintain that they are the one true church of Jesus Christ. The true church of Jesus Christ is not built on a pope. It's built on faith alone in Jesus Christ himself. He is the chief cornerstone. He is the rock of our salvation. And that's why I think it's said to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Do not put your faith in any denomination, any Protestant denomination, Catholicism, rituals, popes, put your faith in Jesus Christ alone. Turn to him if you haven't already. He was faithful to forgive you, and he will save you if you call upon him in faith. But, uh, you know, I just don't see the true church of Jesus Christ having headlines that say things like, Vatican Bank may be too corrupt for Pope Francis to save. And quite frankly, Pope Francis can't save anybody anyway. And that's the scary thing. The world is looking for Pope Francis to be the Savior. That's why uh, Shimon Perez met with him, wanting Pope Francis to head up the United Religions, to run alongside the United Nations for the One World Religion, and made the comment that Pope Francis is the only man on the earth powerful enough to end all wars. I can assure you, Pope Francis cannot and will not end all wars. All right, let's move on, because, uh, again, a lot of other news stories to cover. Um. Hmm. Let's go to this new story. Rivlin calls for construction of new Arab city. Very interesting. This is the president of Israel calling for the construction of a new Arab city. Yet, <laughs> again, the world's turning against Israel, turning against the Jews, and they want to do things like this. Let's make a new Arab city. It's the Arabs that refuse to live in peace with the Jews. And even if Israel gives up a bunch of land for a two-state solution, it will not lead to peace. But it says here, in, time, in the times of Israel, in bridge-building meeting with uh, municipal leaders, President establishes working teams for Arab communities' problems. Do you think the Arab community 
is trying to do anything to help solve Israeli problems? I think not. Um, all right, President Reuven Rivlin expressed Thursday his desire to see a new Arab city founded in Israel. Speaking to 50 municipal and regional council leaders from the Arab community at his official residence, Rivlin also said the integration of Arab, Arabic language instruction in Israeli schools must be deepened. Uh, the, the president's residence would serve as an address for the Arab community to place problems on the national agenda, he promised. Uh, <laughs> We won't get anywhere. He says, we will not get anywhere if we're not concerned that we are sailing on the same boat and the hole below where I sit is endangering everyone on the boat. Uh, <laughs> Some mayors raise the issue of rampant violence in their communities. We are dealing with criminal terrorism. Dozens of cold-blooded killers live among us and we are waiting for the next victim to turn up. This is the responsibility of the state and police as Muslim leaders. Our hands are tied. I want to express to you my deepest condolences. Brother, I'll skip over that. Um, but basically, he's trying to build bridges between the Arab community in Israel and the Jewish people. It says, the gathering was a bridge, Rivlin said, which emphasized that we were meant to live together. And if we understand that, that is where our future is. We will succeed. But, uh, again, it's just not what's going to happen. Psalm 83, four, verse 4 says that they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. They are going to come up against Israel and, try to, and wipe that the name of Israel be no more in remembrance. They want to wipe Israel off the map. That's Psalm 83, 4. And uh, <laughs> Ezekiel 38 and 39 has a lot to say about it as well. I'll get into that maybe a little bit later tonight. Um, but it's just incredible that, uh, you know, the Jewish leadership is trying to do everything they can for peace and to make as many concessions to the Palestinians as, as they can, possibly can. And the Palestinians don't want to make any concessions. All right. Um, let me go to this meeting. Um, I want to get to this article about the prayer meeting that Barack Hussein Obama hosted this morning. Um, and it's amazing how the, the, the agenda of Obama and Pope Francis definitely are hand in hand. This is out of CBS News. At prayer breakfast, Obama condemns use of religion as a weapon. Now keep in mind a couple of things. Barack Hussein Obama still refuses to use the phrase radical Islam. Barack Obama, when he condemns use of religion as a weapon, he's not necessarily talking about Islam. He's talking about any fundamental religious belief that is, that is um, that they, that's in their mind radical that could cause wars or or problems. Pope Francis, same thing. Even condemns fundamental Christianity. But I got some scripture I want to share with this. But let's get into this new story. At, at prayer breakfast, Obama condemns use of religion as a weapon. At the National Prayer Breakfast Thursday, President Obama condemned recent acts of violence by people he said seek to hijack religion for their own murderous ends. That's almost a direct quote from Pope Francis I've seen several times. We've seen professions of faith used both as an instrument of great good and but also twisted and mis misused in the name of evil. Uh, again, I, that's all true, and, I, and I'm certainly not disagreeing with that. The problem is where they want to take this. And uh, so here's the thing. <sighs> Mr. Obama also cautioned against those who might say the violence in the name of religion that has cropped up recently is a lone phenomenon. Now keep in mind, Barack Hussein Obama claims to be a Christian. Claims to be a Christian. Um, he says, Humanity has been grappling with these questions throughout human history. And lest we get on our high horse and think this is unique to some other place, remembering, remember that during the Crusades and the Inquisition, people committed terrible deeds in the name of Christ, he said. In our home country... Slavery and Jim Crow 
all too often was justified in the name of Christ. Does that sound like a Christian to you? Yes, the Crusades were horrible. Yes, the Inquisition was horrible. But that was not true biblical Christianity either. And a, a true Christian would not be calling out Christianity in this in this in this meeting right here. Um, he says, "I." And then he goes on. He says, "Um, the president also offered a guiding set of principles for the faithful, citing basic humility as a top priority." I believe that the starting place of faith is some doubt. Not being so full of yourself and so confident that you are right and that God speaks only to us and doesn't speak to others. That God only cares about us and doesn't care about others. That somehow we alone are in possession of the truth. He also praised America's founding fathers for three principles they championed in the creation of the United States. Freedom of religion, freedom of speech, and separation of church and state. Now, interestingly enough, we're losing our freedom of speech, uh, especially if you try to speak out for the Christian agenda. Two, freedom of religion has been turning into freedom from religion, and all the people who are members of the freedom from religion, and all the atheists, are the ones that are getting all the rights now. And three, the separation of church and state has been totally turned around and is not being used correct now. It was so that the government could not force us into a certain religion. It was not so that we could not free have free exercise of our own religious rights. And as a Christian, we are losing our ability to exercise our religion freely. Um, but uh, it says, The concern for the protection of these rights calls for each of us to exercise civility and restraint and judgment. And if, in fact, we defend the legal right of a person to insult another person's religion... We are equally obligated to use our free speech to condemn such insults and stand shoulder to shoulder with religious communities, particularly religious minorities who are targets of such attacks. Uh, again, that's kind of the exact same agenda that Pope Francis is preaching. But let's go back up here. Obama says, um, where is it again? I believe that the starting place of faith is some doubt. Well, I know one thing for sure. The Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And uh, if you are a true Christian, you're going to stand up for the truth of the Christian faith. Why? Because Jesus Christ himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me in John 14, 6. But I also want to go um, to 1 John chapter 5. And, and again, Pope Francis... And Barack Obama, uh, her, both tend to praise Islam, and Obama constantly quotes the Quran, calls it the Holy Quran, while insulting and putting down the Bible. If he were a Christian, he would certainly not do that. And uh, it's not arrogant, if you're a Christian, to believe that you have the truth. It's the it's the it's just a fact. Christianity, Jesus Christ is the Messiah, the Savior, the only way to God, and He will fill all He all believers with the Holy Spirit, which leads you into all truth. Uh, let's look at First John chapter five, verse thirteen. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know you may know that you have eternal life. And that you may that and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Let's continue on. Read a few more verses. Verse fourteen says, "And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us." In verse nineteen and twenty says, "And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God has come and hath given us an understanding that we may know Him that is true." And we are in him that is true, even the Son of Jesus, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Does that sound like we should have doubt? Does that sound like, um, again, how did he say this? He should, he should, uh, we need to be humble and not full of ourselves and not so confident that you are right and that God speaks only to us and doesn't speak to others, that God only cares about us and doesn't care about others, that somehow we alone are in a possession of the truth. 
But if, if you're a true Christian, you believe that Christianity is the truth because Jesus Christ is the truth. And, and that's where Obama is dangerous. And that's where Pope Francis are dangerous because they refuse to stand up for that and proclaim that as the truth. They're pushing the one world religion of tolerance, the ecumenical movement that will continue to lead people straight to hell and will encourage people to accept the Antichrist agenda. It's getting very dangerous and very... Uh, the strong delusion of Second Thessalonians certainly is, is, is growing and growing. All right, let's move on. More news stories, quite a few more news stories. I'll keep it moving. Several killed as rebels barrage Damascus with rockets. This is how the Times of Israel today. Very interesting. Uh, it says, Army of Islam leader vows to rain down mortars on Syrian capital as revenge for government airstrikes on rebel areas. Uh, very, very interesting. Um, at least three people died and 30 were injured in heavy rebel rocket and mortar barrage of the capital Damascus on Thursday. Uh, the Britain-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said at least 38 rockets were fired on Damascus 30, Thursday, adding that a number of people were wounded. Um, another committee reported that 15 people were killed or wounded in Damascus and its suburbs as nearly 50 rockets struck the city. The um, reason I think that's very interesting is because Isaiah 17.1, the burden of Damascus, behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. Um, the, this battle against ISIS and the, and the civil war in Syria, it's been going on uh, maybe four years now. Um, Damascus is basically a ruinous heap now, but it is still the functioning capital of Syria. Um, and Bashar al-Assad is still in power there. But as you can see, the Damascus pro uh, prophecy of Isaiah 17.1 is getting closer and closer to fulfillment. Um, let's go back to Barack Hussein Obama for a minute. Yesterday, Barack Obama hosted a closed meeting with American Muslim leaders at the White House. And my first impression of that whole deal was simply this. If Barack Obama was up to anything good that the American people would be happy about, he certainly would have let the press in on what was talked about. It wouldn't be a secret, no press meeting, and no one being allowed to talk about what was discussed. So again, Barack Hussein Obama hosted a meeting with American Muslim leaders at the White House, and it was closed. No press. This article says, Just one day after the monstrous murder of a, Jordan, of a Jordanian pilot by the Islamic State, President Obama held, will hold a secret closed-door meeting with high-ranking American Muslims at the White House. I can assure you that Obama is not going to ask them to rebuke the Quranic texts and teachings that command jihad. Obama is not going to ask, is not going to ask them to condemn the jihadic doctrine behind those savage Islamic wars. They will talk about Islamophobia and what can be done to silence the few of us who are still brave enough to talk candidly about Islam. Uh, and I tend to agree that that's a big part of that meeting, because if it wasn't, you, I can assure you, Barack Hussein Obama would have all over the, the press what that meeting was about. And the so-called most transparent administration ever is, again, proving to be the least transparent and the least trustworthy that I think this nation has ever known. And, uh, we again, we have a Muslim in the White House claiming to be a Christian, pushing the Muslim agenda, and working against Israel right now. In fact, actively campaigning against Benjamin Netanyahu in Israel as we speak. All right, let's move on.
Speaking of Syria again, Jordan launches new airstrikes against ISIS. There's even speculation that uh, King uh, Abdullah, who's a pilot, may actually fly a, a jet himself. Um, but fresh attacks in Syria come amid reports of troop movement near Iraq border after Jordanian pilot burned alive by ISIS. Jordan has launched new airstrikes against the Islamic State in Syria a day after King Abdullah pledged to avenge the death of Jordanian military pilot uh, Kasaba. Jordan's army did not disclose what country was targeted during the operation on Thursday, but Al Jazeera has learned that Abdullah um, told his father that the uh, fighter jets flying over their town have just returned from Raqqa, the, IS the ISIS stronghold in Syria. God willing, we will end their existence in Syria. We ask God to help us annihilate them. Mark 13, Matthew 24, Luke 21 talks about wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And that is absolutely what's happening right now. And We've got Muslim against Muslim. Um, <laughs> we are so close to the return of Jesus Christ and the beginning of the final seven-year period of time that, again, is going to get so bad that Jesus said, if he did not shorten the days, no flesh would be saved. Now, here's an article about Netanyahu and, Benjamin, and King Abdullah. This is out of the Jerusalem Post today. Daniel 9.27 talks about a covenant with many. The Antichrist will confirm a covenant with many for one week. That is a seven-year period of time. It is the final seven-year period of time. It will lead to the second coming of Jesus Christ at the Battle of Armageddon. Um, and here, uh, out of the Jerusalem Post, Netanyahu to Jordan's King Abdullah the world should unite against barbaric cruelty of ISIS. Um, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu phoned Jordan's King Abdullah on Thursday and extended his condolences to him and the Jordanian people following the Islamic State's grisly murder of the Jordanian pilot. Netanyahu said that all civilized people were shocked by this barbaric cruelty which the world must fight. Uh, Again, I'm going to post all these in the description box, but you can certainly see Daniel 9.27, he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. This covenant with many is going to be a, a, a an agreement between the you know the Muslim nations, the probably the European Union, maybe the United States of America, to guarantee the security of Israel and eventually allow them to rebuild a third temple in Jerusalem on the Temple Mount that will be there for the Antichrist during the final uh, seven-year period of time. And he will enter that temple three and a half years into it, and uh, the Great Tribulation will begin. But uh, again, we're seeing the world being called together to unite against radical Islam, except for, except for uh, Barack Obama still won't call it that. All right, let's move on. <clears throat> Here's an interesting article about Iran. How Iran is circling the Gulf and Israel. And again, Barack Obama is continuing to supposedly negotiate with Iran over their nuclear program, but it appears that Iran is certainly winning those negotiations and is still working on the nuclear program. How Iran, is, this is all the Gatestone Institute, International Policy Council, how Iran is encircling the Gulf and Israel. With bases in Lebanon, Syria, Yemen, and Iraq, Iran has surrounded all the oil fields of the Persian Gulf. This encirclement can comfortably be backed with Iran's forthcoming nuclear weapons program. The Iranians already have Hezbollah sitting on Israel's northern border. All they need now is another terror group sitting in Gaza to the south in order to create a similar encirclement, and they are working hard to achieve that goal. We welcome any party that supports the Palestinian cause. Um, 
And, and of course, that's where Hamas is, is in the Gaza Strip. And Iran has been supplying Hamas with weapons. Iran is not interested in the reconstruction of the Gaza Strip. The only thing Iran is interested in, in there is turning Hamas into another Iranian-backed army that would be used to attack Israel. As U.S. President Barack Obama continues to seek a negotiated deal on Iran's nuclear program, the Iranians have been working hard in recent weeks to infiltrate the Palestinian arena and reestablish ties with their ally Hamas. Emboldened by Obama's obsession with nuclear negotiations, which are set to resume next month, Iran's leaders apparently trust that the Obama administration is prepared to turn a blind eye to whatever they do. That's what the, the world knows that. The world understands that that's exactly what's happening here. That Barack Obama is going to turn a blind eye to whatever Iran is doing. So the Iranians are apparently free to meddle once again in international affairs of the Palestinians to strengthen their hand further in the Middle East. With bases in Lebanon, Syria, Yemen, and Iraq, Iran has surrounded Saudi Arabia and all the oil fields of the Persian Gulf. This encirclement can be comfortably backed with Iran's forthcoming nuclear weapons program. Uh, <laughs> wow, and it, let's see here. It says, um, it is obvious by now that Tehran is using these negotiations with the Obama administration to divert attention from its efforts to deepen its involvement in the Middle East with the hope of taking over the oil fields and eliminating Israel. Um, <laughs> wow. Let me turn to Ezekiel real quick. Ezekiel 38, 39. Um, <laughs> Turkey is turning against Israel, even though they're a NATO, a NATO member. Uh, they are now aligning themselves with Iran and Russia, which is the alliance, by the way, of also with uh, Ethiopia and Libya. It's all coming together. This alliance is here now in uh, Ezekiel 38. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against them, and say... Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O God, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. Verse 5 says, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all of his bands, the house of Tagarma of the north quarters and all his bands, and many people with thee. The, this, these nations are going to come down and attack Israel. It says, uh, verse 8, After many days thou shalt be visited, in the latter years thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword, and is gathered out of many people, against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste, but is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely all of them. Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm, thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land, thou and all thy bands, and many people with thee. Uh, <laughs> Turkey, Russia, Libya, Ethiopia, and Persia, which is Iran. And Iran has circled, this article just talked about how they've circled the Persian Gulf and Israel, and they're just waiting for time to attack them. Uh, so we got news showing that the Syrian Damascus prophecy of Isaiah 17.1 is on the brink of happening. Psalm 83 in Ezekiel 38 and 39, on the brink of happening. Mystery Babylon with Pope Francis, certainly on the brink. It, wow, it's just incredible, all the stuff that's going on. Uh, the the world trying to come together and for unity to stamp out extremism is helping to bring on Daniel 9.27, as well as the one world religion. Let's move on. Uh, here's a sad story. Um, military chaplains. The new Don't Ask, Don't Tell. On a Prophecy Newswatch newsletter. It says, Don't Ask, Don't Tell was once a term used to refer to homosexuality in the military. Now, however, the term is more often being applied to Christians in uniform. The new Don't Ask, Don't Tell. 
military chaplains are, are feeling the pressure to conform to the new reality as some label biblical values hate speech. That This is <laughs> such a sign of the last days, and it is so important. Again, let me read that again. Military chaplains are feeling the pressure to conform to the new reality as some label biblical values hate speech. So again, what I'm doing here tonight, preaching Jesus Christ is the only way, is now considered hate speech. Chaplains have been an integral part of the military throughout our nation's history, bringing hope to the living and comfort to the dying. Now some chaplains are coming under fire from official government policy and must choose between their consciences and their commander's orders. The repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell worried the chaplains who follow biblical, the biblical view of same-sex relationships. Congress then stepped in, passing a bill that guaranteed the rights of all military personnel to exercise their faith. Um, let me scroll down. This is, again, a long article. He goes on to talk about a chaplain who um, spoke about suicide and depression, and he was told he can't share Bible verses anymore, and they can't preach in the name of Jesus Christ anymore, even when they're chaplains. Um, at, the, at the end here it says... Um, you serve everybody with grace and dignity. However, when someone comes to you for counsel, you've got to be absolutely clear up front that if you're coming to me, I counsel from a biblical perspective. I don't want to see chaplains leave the military, he said. I hope many more good men and women will become chaplains, but if you can't do it in good conscience, then you owe it to God to leave the military. How sad is that when Christian chaplains can no longer feel like they're serving God and stay in the military because... The military is forcing them into this, I don't know what you want to call this religion, this one-world, godless religion. That's what it is, and it is forming so fast. Let's look at a couple more verses here. Let's go to John chapter 6, excuse me, John chapter 16, verses 1 through 3. These things have I spoken unto you, that you should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues, Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God service. And these things they will do unto you, because they have not known the Father nor me. Now, certainly Christians are being killed by in the Middle East for their faith. That's happening more and more around the world for that matter. And the radical jihadist, satanically inspired, demon-possessed terrorists when they kill in the name of Allah, believe they are killing Christians and doing God a service. We are certainly seeing that happen now every day around the world. Um, but it's also being pushed into America and into the military and into our schools and into the public where you cannot stand up for the gospel of Jesus Christ anymore. John chapter 15 verses 18 and 19 if the world hate you you know that it hated me before it hated you if you were of the world the world would love his own but because you are not of the world but i have chosen you out of the world therefore the world hateth you and, and again we see that happening that's where we're at today first timothy chapter 4 verse 1 and 2 now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. For the time will come when they, when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. And real quickly, I want to go to Galatians. Because this is where Pope Francis is at right now, preaching a different gospel. And quite frankly, the, 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 a lot of pastors and, and all sorts of denominations now are preaching a different gospel. 
and the chaplains in the military are being forced to preach a different gospel. So let's look at Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. I, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so I say now again, if any man preach any other gospel un unto you than that which we have received, ye have received, let him be accursed. Um, there is no other name given unto uh, to man under heaven whereby we must be saved other than Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Philippians chapter 2, uh, verse 9. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that the name of Jesus that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So-called Christian Obama certainly never stands up for Jesus Christ that way. Pope Francis, the supposed leader of the largest Christian denomination on the world, in the world, 1.2 billion Catholics, never stands up and says Jesus Christ is the only way. We are living in the days of, of the Laodicean church and a false gospel is prevalent and the world does not want to hear the truth and it's becoming more and more hostile to the gospel message. But I'm going to continue to preach it because all of the signs that Jesus Christ told us to look for are here. We are on the brink of the return of Jesus Christ and praise God he's going to come get his church and take him home. And I pray that you are ready. If you are not, today is the day of salvation. It is time to call upon the name of the Lord in faith and he will save you. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10 says, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And verse 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Um, and that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He will save you if you call out to him in faith. That's why he came and died for you. And is resurrected, and he is coming back soon for his believers. Make sure you're ready. Keep looking up. God bless everyone.